Hey, I'm Robert Cooksaw Manufacturing. I uh, want to talk a little bit about bandsaw blades today, uh, but before we really get into the blades, um, we're going to start doing some giveaways here pretty soon. Uh, so subscribe to our videos so you can stay tuned for those giveaways. Also, we're going to have several follow-up videos uh, for these blades. We're going to talk about it today, and then here soon we're going to get into it and show you on the mill the performance, how they're going to cut, um, to kind of back up what we're saying on these blades. Uh, but like, subscribe, comment. We've got a lot of giveaways coming up, uh, so make sure you're tuned in for that. So getting into our bandsaw blades, um, what we have here, this is our Dura 2 Super Sharp blade. Uh, this one here is inch and a quarter, and that is the width. Uh, blade are, are going to be measured from the tip of the tooth to the back of the blade. Our inch and a quarter blade is going to measure about inch and five sixteenths. So we've got a little bit of extra material in here, gives you a little bit more beam strength going through the cut. Um, so our inch and a quarter is a little oversized, which our inch and a half is as well. Um, so we've got a little bit heavier blade that we offer, but this is our Dura 2 Super Sharp. Um, inch and a quarter width, 7 8 2 spacing, and that is measured from tip to tip on the teeth. And then it's 42 thousandths thick, and that is the body of the blade. Uh, so a couple things about a bandsaw blade. There's several things that have to be just right on this blade for it to saw straight, and that's what we're after, is a good straight cut. Um, blade's got to be sharp. Uh, we all know the blade's got to be sharp, but there's several things on that. So the tip of the tooth, that is what's contacting the wood, that is what's doing all of our cutting. Um, so if we're looking at the blade, about the top 10 thousandths of that tip, that is what's making contact with that blade, that is, or contact with the wood, that's what's pulling the sawdust out. Um, so that face angle, uh, the hook angle is what we call it, and the back angle, that's gotta come to a point. If it's dual, you'll see roundness on the edges. Um, it'll, it'll be shiny. So we're looking for a good, sharp blade, and as that tooth goes through the wood, every tooth's taken about Ten thousandths of wood per tooth. Now that there's a lot of factors there. That, that may not be completely accurate to say how fast I'm cutting, how fast my blade's spinning, how much horsepower I have. Um, so there's a lot of variances on that. But that t top tip of the tooth is what's doing all of our cutting. And if that's not sharp, it's not going to cut straight. So as the blade is going through the wood, um, you've got set on your teeth. So if it's forty-two thousandths um, thickness. Generally, our blade is going to be about 24 to 25,000 set, um, just about half the thickness of the body of the blade, and that creates a path for that blade to travel through. So when that blade is going through the, the cut, the body of the blade is not contacting the wood. Um, it's just the top tips of the teeth that is doing all the, the cutting, and the body is there for support, for strength, to keep it straight, keep it true. So that, uh, that keeps our blade cool, keeps it from getting uh, built up on it. Now, how fast I'm running that blade through does make a difference. If um, we, we like to, I don't want to be any faster than about 5,500 feet per minute, blade spinning through, um, down to maybe 3,500 feet per minute. And you can give us a call and we can talk about your machine, get some information from you and really set you up with a blade that'll work best for you. Um, and what you're cutting does come into play as well. So we can really set you up on that uh, machine specific, situation specific if you give us a call. But on our mills, we're gonna run about 4,800 to 5,500 feet, 5, feet per minute going through the cut. And that determines how fast I'm pushing it through. So if my blade's spinning 6,000 feet per minute going through, and I'm barely going through my cut, that tooth is not, uh, not taking a whole lot of a bite out of that wood. So I'm getting a very fine powder, uh, powdery sawdust, it'll be like flour, and it's gonna cake on my wood, and that's gonna build up, it escapes across the gullet, builds up on the wood, and that'll generate heat on the back of that blade. Anytime that blade gets hot, uh, it's gonna weaken it, it's gonna change it, it's gonna be very hard to control. So you're gonna drop very quickly um, in performance once that blade gets hot. So how sharp the blade is, what the set is and how fast it's turning, that, that all kind of comes into one big picture to, to get a, a good straight cut. Now, when I start getting into faster speed, more production speed, 60 foot a minute to 100 foot a minute on our, on our bandsaws, uh, thin curve, um, I'm taking a bigger chunk of wood 
and that chunk is coming down, is rolling down the, the tip of the tooth, coming into the gullet, and that gullet is pulling it out of the cut. That is the only purpose for the gullet of the blade is to pull sawdust out of the cut. Does not have to be sharp, does not have to be sharpened. Um, it's just pulling sawdust out of the cut. So the tip's got to be razor, not razor sharp, but it has to be very sharp, can't have any dual edges. Um, I do have to have offsets on the teeth, um, and that creates a pass. I don't generate heat, and that gullet's going to pull sawdust out of the cut, and that gives me uh, accuracy, keeps it straight going through the wood. So another factor to the blade um, is the, uh, the heat treating process. So our blades, are uh, they go through a multiple step heat treating process um, that gives us longevity of the blade. So the teeth have been uh, hardened. Uh, they are very hard. The body is uh, softer material. So that gives it flex going around. So several steps going through that. If you're using our Dura 2 Super Sharp blades, you've probably noticed that you get a little more life out of it. Uh, we do have a few secrets that we hold on to. Uh, some things that give us a little bit of advantage on that, uh, that process there. So you've probably noticed that if you've been using our blades, you get a little bit more life out of them. Uh, but every blade does have heated, treat, heated teeth, and then it goes through a multiple step process uh, for the rest of the body. So we've got two different styles of blades here. I've uh, got a super sharp, the darker color, and then our ultra 10 over here, the, the little bit lighter color blade. Uh, so there are several differences between these two blades. They're both inch and a quarter, which on ours is going to be a little bit over, so measure about inch and 5 sixteenths. They're both 42 thousandths thick, and they both have a 7 eighths two spacing that measures tip to tip. Um, the difference on it is going to be the, the metal makeup and then also the tooth profile. Um, so the metal makeup, the Dura 2 Super Sharp Blade, the darker color, is a little bit stiffer material. Um, same thickness, but it is a little bit stiffer. That allows me to cut faster. Um, stays true through the wood, while the Ultra 10 Blade is going to be a little bit softer. Um, it's got uh, some special properties to it. and I'll get a little more runtime through it. It's, uh, it's not going to cut quite as fast. Uh, depending on the sawmill that you have and the horsepower that you have, we may go different ways. Uh, but as a rule, a little bit softer material will saw longer, not quite as fast as the stiffer material will. Uh, but again, call us with your sawmill, with your, uh, your situation, and we'll talk you through it and come up with a good solution for you on it. Um, another difference on this blade is the tooth profile. So the Ultra 10, um, that is a basically an industry standard. It's going to be a 10 degree angle on the face, 30 degree angle on the back. Um, this is generally considered uh, an all-purpose blade. Um, I like it on a, a more fibrous wood. Um, that 10 degree angle, um, if I'm zero, eight, which is on our super sharp. Uh, so zero, eight, and 10. So it's got a little bit more lean forward to it. And that's gonna give us a um, little bit more of a, a shear factor going through it, going through the cut. So on my more fibrous woods, uh, softer woods, I do like the, the Ultra 10 blade um, or lower horsepower machines. It's not gonna be as aggressive. It's not gonna cut as uh, deeper. It's not gonna have as deep as penetration as our super sharp will. So I like this on a lower horsepower machine, a little bit slower cut or a fibrous wood. Um, and again, I'm gonna fall back to every situation is different. Call us, we can help you figure it out. So the Super Sharp Blade we designed um, about 25 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. Um, and it's kind of changed the industry on blades, but it's gonna have a eight degree angle on the hook and a 40 degree angle on the back. Uh, that, 10 degree, the industry standard, kind of what, uh, what was known, we brought it up to an eight degree, and that's gonna give me deeper penetration into the wood. Um, cutting wood's all about how deep that tooth gets into it um, and how fast it's moving. So each tooth is able to take more bite of wood per tooth per pass. On a, one of our standard production mills, we're running that blade about 60 miles an hour, 55, 60 miles an hour through the cut, about 5,500 feet per minute. So every tooth, as it's taking a bite of wood, that tooth's going through that wood about five to six times a second. So it is moving quick, taking a lot of wood out, 
and that angle gives me deeper penetration, allows me to pull that through the, through the wood, get bigger chunks, allows me to saw faster. Um, and the way we've got them heat treated, I get a little bit more life out of them too. Um, so the, the tooth will stay sharper um, the, than our Ultra 10 blade. The body of the blade, the flexibility of it, that's what's gonna, I'm gonna get more life out of the body of the blade here. But the profile and the heat treating that we've got on our super sharp blade is gonna cut faster and it's gonna stay sharper longer. So we've got two different blades here. Uh, they are both Dura 2 super sharp, which means they're gonna have the same profile on the tooth. Uh, the difference is gonna be the, the width, um, the thickness, and the tooth spacing. So we've got our inch and a quarter. Um, our inch and a quarter blades are gonna be 42 thousandths thick with a 7 8 tooth spacing. We've got our inch and a half blade. Uh, this particular one is gonna have a one inch tooth spacing and it's gonna be 50 thousandths thick. On the inch and a half size, I also offer a 7 8 tooth spacing and then our magnum will be 55 thousandths thick. Uh, so some of the reasons I'd run different size blades, it, it depends on what you're doing. Um, if, if you've got questions, saw milling's all the same. Everybody's cutting wood. Um, the way they're doing it, the mill they're using, how they're getting it to the wood, everybody's different. Um, so we're all doing the same thing. We all do it different ways. So what works best for one person with the same mill may not work as good for the, the next guy using the exact same sawmill. So give us a call. We'll try to help you out best we can, give you things to try and see if we can improve you there. Um, that being said, there are some general rules that, uh, that we can follow. Inch and a half blade will cut faster than an inch and a quarter blade. Um, I have to have the horsepower to push the inch and a half blade to see that, uh, to see that difference. Um, so this is our inch and a half blade, 50 thousandths, one inch, two spacing. Uh, this is what I'd use on our AC36 with a 49 horsepower Perkins diesel. Um, I may also use a 7 8 two spacing there as well. But the, the width of the blade, um, the difference there, that gives me more beam strength. So when that blade is sawing through the, through the cut, it's going through, blades spinning around, uh, making cuts, it's gonna, it's gonna stretch a little bit. Um, now those teeth, I'm not strong enough to pull this blade apart, so we'll do it with my hand. So if I'm cutting through, that blade does not stretch this way it's stretching this way. Those teeth, as it pulls through that wood, those teeth are getting pulled apart. Um, and as that happens, and as I saw more and more, you'll start to see stress cracks um, show up in the blade. We're getting a lot of subject. This is a uh, bonus material here. Um, so as we're sawing, that blade's gonna get dull. Starts 100% sharp, it's gonna get dull every cut, every time that tooth goes through the wood, it gets a little bit more dull every time it's starting to pull this way. So that blade is stretching out. Um, and when it stretches out, it loses a little bit of strength in the body. And I've got to back off. I can't put it as, push it as fast. And as it gets duller, I'm putting more and more stress in it. Start to put a lot of stress in the body of the blade and that's what's gonna eventually cause them to, to break. Um, when I have the thicker blade, the inch and a half, the wider blade, uh, I've got a lot more beam strength. So I can push that blade a lot harder without having that same stretch or stress in the body of the blade. So I can push this blade a lot faster than I could on the inch and a quarter. Now, if you've got 15, 20 horsepower on your sawmill, you'd be really tough to justify the inch and a half blade. Um, I should be able to, to choke out a 20 horsepower gas engine sawing straight with an inch and a quarter blade. Um, if you're having troubles cutting straight with that blade, we've got other alignment issues. Um, give us a call and we can help you walk through that. Um, but a 20 horsepower gas engine just doesn't have um, the power behind it to really justify going with a th bigger, thicker blade. Um, nothing necessarily against it. It's just, uh, it'd be hard to justify. Um, I'll stick with inch and a quarter. If you're having problems, again, give me a call. But on this inch and a half blade, we've got two different two spacings that we offer. I've got a one inch and a seven eight. So as that blade, going back to going through the wood, uh, the wider or closer together that the teeth are depends on how much tooth or how much wood is taken per tooth. 
So a one inch blade is gonna take a bigger chunk of wood because I've got more of a gap between each teeth. It's constantly moving forward. It's constantly spinning. How fast it's moving forward depends on how much wood it's biting and the spacing between the teeth affects that as well. So if I've got uh, 7 8 2 spacing, it's just for example sake, let's say it's taking 8,000 spite of wood, um, that sawdust comes out. If I've got a one inch, it's taking 10, 11, maybe 12,000 spite of wood, pulling that sawdust through. It allows me to saw a little bit faster. Um, it all goes back to horsepower, how fast I'm gonna cut. Horsepower directly relates to the speed of uh, what I'm able to cut with. Uh, but the inch and a half, the width and the thickness gives me more beam strength. I'm able to push it faster without getting the wave that shows up uh, when, you're, when you're pushing your blade too hard. So we've got our inch and a half Duratooth blade, uh, and then we also have our uh, two inch blade. This one is a Magnum blade, which is gonna be a little bit thicker, it's 55 thousandths, um, and a little bit wider at two inches. Again, the difference is gonna be speed, how fast I'm going through the cut. Uh, we're going to do some uh, videos coming up uh, with these two blades. It, uh, it'll be on this mill here behind me. So we're going to put them both to the test, see how fast we're able to cut. Um, so subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that. But the two inch blade does the same thing inch and a half does to an inch and a quarter versus inch and a quarter. It's going to be wider. It's going to give me more beam strength. It allows me to push that blade harder through the cut and keep it true and keep it stable. If I'm sawing Let's say we've got a, uh, a 12 inch can, 12 by 12 uh, red oak log on the mill. And I'm sawing at, if I'm going one to 10, uh, one being slow speed, 10 being fast speed, both of these blades are gonna cut identical up to maybe six, seven, maybe eight, depending on how well I've got it tuned in. Um, and that inch and a half blade is gonna start to, to wander on me. It does not have the beam strength to keep it straight at that high speed. The two inch blade um, at that seven, eight speed on my one to 10 scale, um, it's gonna be able to be pushed harder, pushed faster. So it will go up to nine, 10, keeping that straight, uh, hundreds feet per minute, um, depending on what I'm cutting. Uh, so I can push it faster, but at slower speeds, both blades will cut the same. If you find that a two inch blade is cutting better for you than an inch and a half and you're going 40 feet a minute, you have an alignment issue. It's not on your blade, it's on your sawmill. Um, again, give me a call and we can help you walk through those steps. But the wider the blade, the thicker the blade, the faster I can push it. On that same note, I've got uh, more material um, on this blade. So the two inch blade, is going around the same band wheels uh, that the inch and a half blade is, but it's wider and it's a little bit thicker. It's putting more stress um, in the body of the blade. So I am will cut faster, may not get quite the life out of a two inch blade. Um, and that may be exact opposite of what you're thinking. More material should last longer. The tooth profile is gonna be the same. The blades are gonna be the same, except this one's got an extra half inch coming off the back. That extra material doesn't give me more life, gives me more strength. That strength going around the same radius band wheel is actually gonna cause more stress um, in the, the wider material. Uh, so for blade life, I like a little bit thinner blade. For faster cuts, better performing, I like the, the two inch blade, the wider blade. So that's a um, lot of information on our different types of saw blades. Again, if you've got any questions, if you're doing something a little special, if you're having any trouble cutting straight, give us a call myself or some of our staff can, uh, can walk you through the process, uh, work with you on alignment on your sawmill. If you don't have our sawmill, we will sit down and take time to get your sawmill lined up and sawing straight. Um, we want to sell you our blades, we want you to use our blades, but if you're a new customer, we'll still sit down and help you walk through that whole setup. Um, and then we can talk about what you're doing and recommend a blade that we think is going to work best for you. Um, but we do appreciate you watching our videos. We're going to put this uh, machine through some speed tests, comparing the two different blades, different styles, what's going to cut better in different material. So subscribe, like, comment, anything you want to see. but. Uh, Make sure you don't miss out those next videos coming up.